20 minutos. All right, folks, the weather might be iffy in many parts of North America today, but if you're lucky to have clear skies or a break in the clouds, there are some fun activities you can do at home to safely experience the partial and total solar eclipse. Now here with me is Julie Greer, one of Mesquite's volunteer educators, to show us ways we can view the eclipse if you don't have eclipse glasses. So welcome, Julie. Hi, thank you. So why don't you show us a little bit of the demos that we can, people can do at home? Okay, so one of the fun things, if you happen to be able to stand under a tree, you can look through the branches and you'll see the shadow and the different phases of the eclipse through the branches. So that's an easy one. Yes. And we're lucky enough that the sun is coming out. Um, one of the other things that we've put together is a punch card and you can hold it with the sun at your back on a shadow and you can see the phases of the eclipse. Even though you see a square, a circle and a triangle, when the sun is actually shining through it with the phases, you'll see the phases on the ground or on your, even on your hand. So you can, it's really neat to see the different phases through that. So these are really handy, especially for young kids who, you know, can't really wear the glasses perfectly on their faces, yes. right? Yeah, so that's one of the main things is you don't want to look into the sun. So even most houses have a colander, so you can even show a colander on the ground again with the sun at your back and you can see, yeah, you can see the phases through the, uh, the holes in the colander. So one of the fun things that we've been doing at our booth is actually making a pinhole uh, viewer and it's super simple with cardboard foil and so you cut the, the view part of it and you fold the foil over it this is so easy and then you take a toothpick Sorry. <laughs> it's live tv folks and then you just poke a hole in through the foil just a small hole it's a small hole a round hole and again you'll see the shadow of the eclipse on the on the paper on the the cardboard that's fantastic. Um, is what are like things that um, you know? Like this is one of my favorite activities. Like looking at the shadows. What gadgets at home? Like at home, can people like pull out of their kitchen or anything else? So a cereal box. You can make a pinhole uh, viewer out of a cereal box. Um, I actually pulled this one off my refrigerator this morning. So um, and again, you do it the same way with poking a hole in it and holding it up to the sun, so you can see the shadow on the ground. Um, we've got the, the tree branches is a good one. Um, and the colander is an easy one to pull out of your kitchen. Okay. How are you feeling about the weather here in Texas today? I am so excited that the sun is coming out. It's a little bit humid, but we're used to that in Texas. We have every little, you know, phase of the, of the weather, but the sun is out. So people are starting to look up. It's really fun to see the different faces already. And as an educator, how are you feeling about people's reactions to the eclipse, to, to the science, to, to the things that they can do? It's been really fun. We've been talking about how the animals are going to react and is it safe to leave your dogs outside and how the birds are going to quit chirping because they think it's nighttime. And so it's been, it's been fun to, to, to Google and, and research some of that. Um, what, have been, what has been like the biggest question people typically ask of you? A lot of them are, are, why can't I just look up the sun? Why can't they, you know, and so you, you get a sunburn if you sit out in the sun too long. So imagine looking directly at the sun with your eyes and, and the damage that it can do to your retinas. And it's not even something that you'll notice right away. It may be something that you notice a day or two later that you sunburned your eyes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Julie, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, and now I think we're going to throw it back to the views in Mazatlan and maybe or elsewhere around the country. So.
15 segundos para el fin de la totalidad. Hay que dejar de mirar. Cuando yo les dé la señal. De aquí hasta las 12.32 vamos a tener el fenómeno inverso. La luna se va a ir retirando hasta que a las 12.32 volvamos a tener el mismo sol de todos los días. El eclipse haya terminado y tengamos que esperar otros tres siglos para volver a presenciar esto. Muchas gracias a todos. All right, oh my gosh, folks, have you seen that? Did you see, you know, the eclipse touching down on Mazatlan oh, all day today, this morning? Just the earliest, uh, the earliest um, forecasts were cloudy and potentially rainy. And just then you could see just how quickly the weather changes, you know, just in time for that moment of totality. And even after totality, that moment when, when you know, the diamond effect came in through, the Bailey's beads were peeking through, like it just is so, so exciting. And I am living vicariously through them right now as the clouds start to cast a shadow on us instead of the moon. But you know what? There's just so much more excitement to be had because we're going to head over to Carbondale, Illinois. Again, the weather's been so changeable throughout the path of totality. But sometimes, look, you just you just never know, right? Total solar eclipses happen every few years or so, especially like where, um, you know, it's usually on somewhere else like the South Pacific. So this is a really special thing that we are hitting so many people um, around this, this North America, this continent. Um, so you know what? We're going to head over to hear more from a citizen scientist setting up their solar eclipse experiments out in Carbondale, Illinois. Let's take a look. Broadcasting Initiative, and it's a joint venture between NASA and Southern Illinois University here in Carbondale, Illinois. And what is your role in this in the study? What are you doing as a citizen scientist? Well, you said it. I'm a citizen scientist. I was recruited. I'm an alumni here from Southern Illinois University, and they contacted me prior to the annular eclipse, which we had last October. Uh, and asked me to record that from my home in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I kept the equipment and then they asked if I might join them here in Carbondale. So I drove two and a half days from Santa Fe and ended up here with all of this gear that you see in front of me to capture data of the solar eclipse that's happening today. Your background is in the motion picture industry. You do not have a background as a scientist. How did you end up doing this? 
That's correct. I worked in the motion picture business for about 25 years. And so I know cameras, but I don't know telescopes. So when they sent all of this to me, I had never operated a telescope. I had never operated a mount like this. Certainly I've used a computer, but all of the software was new to me as well. So there was a bit of a learning curve. However, I think that my experience, and boy, the crowd is really getting into it right now. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. There's a countdown going on. But uh, all of my experience in the movie business did help, and it prepared me to really figure out how to work this gear and, and get the data that NASA needed. What is it about your experience capturing the annular eclipse in October that caught your imagination and made you want to continue? Well, it really was something else. I didn't know what to expect. I had never been through a total eclipse, totality or annular. Annular, of course, is when the moon only covers a portion of the sun, not quite the entirety of the disk. And it still was a very interesting, some people say it's a magical time. Uh, the sky gets dark, obviously, but there in Santa Fe, a breeze came up. It got remarkably cooler. I had to put on a sweater. It was October anyway, but still, when the sun was covered up, it's amazing how much energy we lose here on the Earth when it's darkened like that. And we saw the effect of that. So. I'm really looking forward to experiencing that here when the entire disk is, is obscured by the moon. This should be really cool to see in another half an hour, 45 minutes from now. What exactly are you doing here? You're on the football sidelines. Um, you got a bunch of cameras and telescopes. What exactly are you measuring? Uh, well. NASA is going to have to tell me what they're using my data for. I really don't quite know what they're doing with the uh, special files that I'm capturing using this material here, this small telescope. There's a mono camera here that records.